in this example, we can see that we're trying to estimate the repair cost. So we're told we have a random sample of 60 refrigerators. It's a particular brand and model. And the mean for that 60 was $150, the mean repair cost. So what we want is a 90% confidence interval for the repair cost, assuming we happen to know the population standard deviation is 14. And so when it says an interval for the repair cost, you got to ask yourself, is that going to be a percentage, a mean, a standard deviation? And so, of course, the only way we can really measure the typical repair cost would be with an average or a median. And we don't really have, uh, in this class at least, a nice method for finding a confidence interval for the median. So this would be a confidence interval for the mean. So as soon as I realize that, I recognize, okay, this is going to be either a T interval or a Z interval. And the question is, well, which one do I pick? Anytime you know the population standard deviation, that's when you're going to use a Z interval. If I have an estimate for the mean, population standard deviation is known, I'm going to use a Z interval. And so to do this by hand, the formula is X bar, our point estimate, plus or minus ZC. That comes from a table we'll talk about in a second, times the standard error, which is sigma over the square root of n. Okay, now ZC is a critical value from the standard normal distribution. Uh, ZC for some common values for common confidence levels is 1.645 for 90%, 1.96 for 95%, and then 2.575 for 99%. And so in all of these cases, uh, you'll be given these values and you, sh you shouldn't have to worry about memorizing them. But sometimes you'll see things where they ask for maybe a 89% confidence interval or something strange like that. That's textbook stuff. These are, these are more realistic as far as the type of values that you'll run across. Okay, so once I have that, all I got to do is really plug this in and then calculate. So X bar in this case is 150. Since we're doing a 90% confidence interval, this would be 1.645. And then sigma is 14. And this is over the square root of n, which is 60. Okay, now when you do this calculation, it's important to make sure that you're doing everything within the calculator. So when I go in my calculator, I'm doing 14 divided by the square root of 60. And then I'm multiplying that by 1.645, all within the calculator. In other words, I'm not going to round to the very end. So I get 150 plus or minus 2.97. Okay, so this is one way I could report my confidence interval. This could absolutely be a final answer. Just put my units on it and say, okay, this is it, I'm done. My confidence interval is 150 plus or minus $2.97. Another way to write this is to actually go through and do the calculation. So you'll get two endpoints, 150 minus 2.97 and 150 plus 2.97. If you do this calculation, you're going to end up with a lower endpoint of 147.03 and an upper endpoint of 152.97. So another way to write this confidence interval would be 147.03 comma 152.97. Both of these are absolutely correct ways to write the confidence interval. It's just up to you which method uh, you prefer. And again, you would usually put units here, but sometimes it comes from context. So either one, these are exactly the same thing. They mean the same thing. So what we would interpret this as is that we're 90% confident that the repair costs for all refrigerators of this brand and model would be somewhere between $147 and $153. Make sure you read carefully about how to do these interpretations since they're an important part of understanding confidence intervals. Now I have two other questions here. What's the margin of error? That would be this complete thing here. That would be what we add and subtract. So the margin of error in this particular case would be $2.97. What's the point estimate? Well, the point estimate would be the sample value for whatever you're estimating. We're trying to estimate a population mean. So in this particular case, the point estimate is X bar. And that X bar was 150. 